Hi and welcome back to another Amazon selling video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Nikki Kirk and I've been selling on Amazon doing retail arbitrage for three and a half, almost four years, all from my fifth wheel RV, which is currently parked right on the beach in Magnolia Beach, Texas. Believe it or not, it was super windy yesterday and this is actually a little quieter, although the waves are kind of loud, so hopefully you can hear me over them. But it's gorgeous outside and I had to do a video outside. So today I thought I would just do a quick video of why I don't. All the questions I get of why don't you do this and why don't you do that, there are four of them that I get pretty often, so I'm gonna cover them today. They are things like why don't I add shipping costs when you look at my profit screens, if you've seen any of my sourcing videos where I never add in the shipping costs to Amazon, why I don't do that. Why I don't buy it if Amazon is selling it, why I don't buy it if it doesn't have a rank. And then lastly, why I don't tell you what I'm selling right now. So the first one, why don't I add in the shipping cost to Amazon when you see my profit screens, like why don't I ever add anything? That is actually the second most frequently asked question. The first is what scanning app I use. So if you don't know, I use the Amazon seller app. It's the free app with your account. But in that app, when I show you on screen like things I'm buying or profit, you'll never see me add a price to the Amazon shipping cost. So let me just pull it up and show you what it looks like. So here we've got just a random Kinder Egg that I had scanned at some point when I was outsourcing. So it's 11.12 the Amazon cost. The shipping fees with FBA is 4.21. Amazon shipping cost is zero right here, right? And then you've got the cost of purchase is 4.99. I never add in a price to this Amazon shipping cost and I'll tell you why in a second, but if you wanted something to just go off of. 50 cents is usually a good indicator. Honestly, 50 cents is kind of on the high side if you really wanna know, but it's a good starting place if you wanna have something in there. Why I don't do it is actually just because I'm kind of lazy. It takes extra time to put it in there. I've done it so often that I know that like if it's gonna make $5, which is my minimum profit that I wanna make, then I can handle 50 cents on top of that. Or say if it's gonna make 580 and I know, okay, I'll be at least be making 530. It's a calculation I just do really quickly in my head or I used to in the beginning. And right now I just, I don't even factor it in anymore. It's maybe it's just after time doing it. But if you wanna do it, a safe bet is 50 cents and I'll show you why right now. Here is how you can actually calculate your, you know, safe number if you wanted to do it. Or actually you can get your actual per shipment this way also. So if you want to take a look at what your cost of shipping per item is for, for any given shipment, here's how you do it. You just go ahead and go to your previous shipments, so manage inventory, FBA shipments, and you click on one, and at the top, it'll tell you how much you paid for it. So this shipment went from Oregon to Virginia. It costs total 1056, so I'm gonna put in 1056, and 15 items went to it. So on that one, my average cost per unit for that one shipment was 70 cents, which again is on the high end. So now let's do the rest of that shipment. So Amazon broke my shipment up into three different shipments, two to California, two different warehouses in California. So let's see what that one did. So another one was 862 and 34 units went to that shipment. So that one was 25 cents an item to ship all those 34 units from Oregon to California. But now I had a big shipment and that was 41.05. We're gonna divide that by how many units there were, 166. And that one was 24.7, rounding up 25 cents again on that one. So on that one, it was lower than 50 cents. So now I'm gonna do the whole entire shipment. So all together, those three shipments cost 60.23 divided by 215 units total that I purchased. So now we're talking 28 cents a unit. So that's just something like quickly if you wanna know or have a better gauge. So I could have said probably on this one, 30 cents was a good gauge. But if you wanna know, that's how you can go about doing that. That's why I don't do it personally, probably just cause I'm lazy or it's so, it's so nominal that it doesn't actually matter all that much. But of course it does part of your profit, so it does matter. Another why don't I buy it if it doesn't have a rank? If it doesn't have a rank, that means it's either brand new or it's just not selling. Either way, I put it back on the shelf. It's not worth my time and investment and money on something that is not gonna move because as retail arbitrage sellers, we wanna flip things really fast. So if it's not gonna have a rank, that means for me, it's not selling. Now, if I started scanning like pool toys, obviously we're in spring, right? And it's nice here, but it's not nice everywhere. So eventually that might rank. All I do is I just keep scanning it when I see it in store to see if it eventually has a rank. If it does, then I buy it, but right now I'm not buying it. 
the Amazon bestseller ranks are your key as a seller to understanding how fast any given profit will sell at any time. So the number is fluid. If something sells today, it's gonna have a better rank than if it didn't sell all day yesterday. It changes, but it is a snapshot in time for you to know and you're making your buying decisions. So for example, something ranked 540 in toys is going to sell like 5,000 a month according to Jungle Scout. But if it's ranked 140,000 in toys, it's only gonna sell about 30 a month. So it's still selling, but it's not selling as fast, so you wouldn't wanna buy as many. And those are all kind of factors that the rank is really crucial in telling you. It's also important to understand that rank in any category is different. So what ranks really great in toys might be horrible rank in baby. It varies by category. So I have a free download on my website. If you sign up for my email list, the link is below. It gets emailed over to you right away. And it's just really helpful to understand when you're shopping, what's a good rank in a certain category. Another free resource is junglescout.com slash estimator. You can go in there, put your marketplace and see what an item will sell, how many a month. It's a really indicator in how many to buy. So that's available to you. Another why don't I, why don't I buy it if Amazon is selling it? I actually just did a poll and it's like, most people don't sell it if Amazon is, but some people do. Why I don't is, this is Amazon's platform. They own it. They want to sell their own product. They will share the buy box, but do I really want to invest money into inventory where Amazon is selling it and I'm having to compete with Amazon or would I just rather compete with FBA sellers like myself? So for me, I don't buy it because I'd just rather not tie up inventory in competing with Amazon. Every seller is different. So I recommend if you are unsure, just go ahead and try it and see what happens. See if you get the sales. I personally just don't. Another why don't I is why don't I tell you what I'm sourcing and selling right now. And I feel like if you sell on Amazon, you kind of already know this, but why would I put out there what I'm buying when it's making me money? So if I put it out there, then anyone could go buy it and it could just inundate the market. So I don't tell you things that I'm sourcing right now because I'm still sourcing them and I want to make money off of them. That's how I make my money. It's the same reason I don't share items that people have shared in the Bolo group. You'll never see me share them. We've got our cone of secrecy, right? Like we have this agreement in the group that we're not going to share with other people what we're sourcing and that's what keeps the value super high of that group. I mean, I think that's kind of self-evident, right? When I do share stuff, it's usually stuff that I can't find anymore. That doesn't mean you might not be able to find it. It's just not in my area or that past stuff. Um, but I do like telling you and showing you stuff because that's how you know that this really does work. And so you do need to see it, but I'm never gonna tell you what I'm sourcing right now unless you're on the Bolo group. Sorry. That is really all I have for you. It is, even though it's windy, a gorgeous day at the beach. So I'm gonna get back to sun tanning today and I will see you next time for another Amazon selling video.